not come out of his room when he would just cry uncontrollably at the drop of a dime. We still decreed it's our winning season. We decree that no weapon formed against him is going to prosper. It may hurt now. We may be in a season now, but he's going to win. He's going to fulfill the call in his life. Not my call for him, but God's call. Amen. No winning season. If you've never decreed that, declare that over your family. You need to start. I was having uh, uh, dinner with somebody recently, and they had said, you know, we never heard that message that it's our winning season. Been in years, been in church for many years, and it's always been, well, you got to do this, and if you don't do this, you're not blessed. You, no, you can decree and declare right now. I'm not perfect, but it's my winning season. Amen. 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 That blessed me. That blessed me. So with, with that saying, we help me welcome Jacob, the LC, to come up and preach. <laughs> So thankful for for the youth and, and the, just the responsibility that I've been able to pick up and just run with um, ever since starting to lead with the youth and I even got to speak at our most recent most recent youth event and it's just uh, it keeps me on my toes and gives me an opportunity to like um, just share what I think I feel God's telling me the things that He puts in me to, to share with the kids and. Um, I don't know, today I feel like I just went from JV to varsity. Like, this Come on, man. Yeah. 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 This is where we're taking it. And so I'm just so thankful. And um, I feel like what God's been telling me and what he's, he wants me to tell you guys today is there's some things in our lives and there's some things that we went through years back and, and maybe even recently, but there's some things that we've been holding on to. And I feel like... God's really telling us right now, and he's been telling me, it's time to release those things. It's time to release the things that, that have been hold we were once holding on to, but now they're holding us back. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. it's just, I feel like it's just a releasing time for me and, and for the church. And just like God, I mean, uh, God told uh, Rev last week, um, it's time to come with our hard hats and not our hard hearts. Come on. You know yeah. So in order to do that, we have to release and we have to let go of the things that we've been holding on to and taking up our, our hand space and, and free our hands so that we can have room for tools and the things that he's ready to release for us. Because once we release what we've been what we've been holding on to, he can release what he's been holding on to for us. Come on. Amen. Good. Good, um, if you will, just uh, bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to pray before I get to Father God, I just thank you right now, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to be up here, Father God, and, and the, the platform and friends and just the all the conditions that you've given me to, to to work for you father god and i do this for you and we do this for you father god and nothing else for your glory jesus and i just pray that you take all of me out of this message and um have me deliver it the way that you would have me deliver it father god and i just thank you and praise you amen amen so, ecclesiastes 3 6 3 6 and it's talking about there's a time and there's a season for everything in the, in the sense of heaven. And there's a season and a time for it. In Ecclesiastes 3, 6, it says, There's a time to search and a time to give up. Amen. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Yep. And so what it's saying is, is the whole that whole book is just saying there's a time for everything. There's a time for this. There's a time for that. And so, But the part that I want to focus on today is the part where it's saying that there's a time to keep and there's a time to throw away or let go or release. So, because like I said, what I feel like God's been telling me lately is just there's things that I've been holding on to and things that we've been holding on to and things that the church has been holding on to that um, we just need to let go. Some hurts in our lives, some people that have hurt us, some things that we've done wrong and, and we're holding it against ourselves and beating ourselves up for it when, when it comes up or when we're reminded of it. And I just really want to send that home that it's time to release. Amen. 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 So, He's ready to release some things in our lives. And like I said, before he can do that, it's really important that we release things that we've been holding in our hands. And so he's ready to give us some new relationships. 
some new peace, some new tools, and some new mindsets and new priorities, and even some new habits that, that we've been struggling with or saying we're going to do it, and, and he's saying now is the time. Yep. It's time to build your church and stop stop holding on to things, stop holding on to tools that you don't need anymore. Amen. Time for new habits. But it's important that before we do that, that we have some releasing to do. Amen. Come on. And so it's important. It's also important because when you're, when you're reading Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes and you're, you're trying to do this thing, and you're trying to be a doer of this, this um, scripture, it's important that you understand that you can't do both simultaneously. Right. When it's time to give up, you can't try and search. When it's time to search, you can't be trying to give up. That's right. And we, when it's time to keep, it, it's not time to throw away. And we're trying to throw away, it's not time to hold on to those things. You know what I'm saying? You can't do both at the same time. Amen. There's a time and a season for all of it. And so, how many of y'all got a past? You're like, oh, I got a past. When I was younger, I was doing some crazy stuff. And maybe it's not even like stuff that you did. <laughs> Your past doesn't even necessarily have to be stuff that you did but stuff that other people did to you. And now because of the hurt and because of the, the how the way it made you feel and, and all that, um, you've kind of brought it into your everyday new life. And so you can say, yeah, I got a past, I got a past, but is it really your past? Because if it's your past, then it shouldn't be affecting your present. Amen. And so some of us, we've got this thing that's called a past present. And so what happens is, um, that's when things in our past, they're affecting our present. And those things, those are the ones that I'm talking about. We need to stop holding them. Amen. And God's saying, I don't want that to control you from receiving what I'm ready to release to you. Amen. It's time to release. It's time to let go of those things. Yeah. And so it's important to let, not let those things that were plaguing you in that one season to paralyze you from your future. Woo. Yeah. So Great. Some of us... Because of our past and because of these walls that we built, um, no, I'm, I'm not going to let this happen to me again, or, or I'll, that'll never happen to me again. I'll make sure of it, or just things that we say that that but we don't even know it, but we're really saying that they have that much control over us that I'm not even willing to go that far. I'm not even willing to go that route anymore. Wow. And so we're scared, and we're we're scarred. Just like God said, we, we're coming to church and we're coming into new relationships with our hard heart and our and not instead of our hard hat. And you can't build things, you can't build healthy relationships, you can't build new bonds, you can't build new habits when you're coming with your hard heart instead of your hard hat. Come on. And so these walls, these walls that were built, that we built when we went through these things or they made us feel good at the time, these walls that we put up to protect us. Back then, we put up so many of them and it was layered now and we're surrounded and it's trapping us now. The thing that once was protecting us in that season, now is keeping us trapped. And it's keeping us locked in. Oof. And so, like I said, like Reverend was saying on Sunday, it's, it's time to put on our hard hats. Amen. And um, some of us, when we, when we build these types of walls that we're building, it's... it's um, got blue eyes and that, and that, like these things that we, we just tell ourselves always oh, got a Camaro that's a bus like you know what I'm saying these things that these little like cliche things that we tell ourselves that no I can't do that I can't step there it's, it's, it's too familiar I've been here before and we're just we're being paralyzed because of things that have happened to us in our past and people that we need to forgive and, and we tell God God they don't deserve to be forgiven and he says but it's killing you Mm. Mm. It's time to let those things go. Come on. Some of us, um, we have relationships that we need to release. It's, yeah. He gets it. He gets me. He understands. Or, or she's got it all. She's got it all figured out. You know what I'm saying? Some of us, we have dreams that that we built before coming to Christ and before connecting with Christ, and they're they're keeping us depressed and, and under so much hurt and sadness that they haven't come to pass, but we built those things without having God's permission, without having God's okay. hand over it. And, and now we're depressed because these things that aren't happening that were never meant to happen. Yeah. Wow. It's putting us in a depression because we're holding on to dreams and we're holding on to things that were never meant for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna let those go. Amen. First Peter 5, 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God 
for he cares for you. Oh, and so, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I, I, I gave this message to the kids on Thursday, and I was telling them, it's perfect, this is a perfect time because they're going back to school, there's friends that may have hurt them or done them wrong, and, and there's time to let that go and not let that affect new relationships. And so I was like, some of the kids, uh, yeah, okay, I get it. Cast my cares on the God, Jesus, amen, whatever. Because that's how teenagers talk. Um, <laughs> but first, so I want to say it again, First Peter 5, 7. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. And so that's one of those that was hard to live. And if it's, it's so hard to live because some of us, we do this thing and, and it's, hard to talk about in church, and, and forgive me, God, I'm about to cuss in church. This is what they call a curse word in church. It's called the truth. <laughs> and so, some of us, because we're not telling the truth, and because we're not being honest with ourselves, we don't even, nah, that, that doesn't really get to me, like, how you think it does. That doesn't really matter to me. And wow. Rev taught me something profound years back. Um, when you say you don't care, it just means you really care too much. Yeah. And so, cast all of our cares to God. And it's, it's time to be honest. And it's time to tell the truth uh, with ourselves and to God. Because he can only bless the real you. Not the you that you pretend to be. Wow. And so wow. I want to tell you that some of you are, if he cares for me, then, then why did this happen to me? Or how did this sneak into my life? If he really cares for me, why did this happen? And so I want to tell you that your life up to this point and the amount of happiness, the amount of peace that you've had, the amount of joy that you have today, it's been made up of two things. And the first thing is what happened to you, which you can't control. And number two, it's made up of how you reacted to it and how you responded. So the friends that you have today are dependent on what happened to you and how you, what kind of friends you went for after that. And the, and the job you have is because of what happened to you. Uh, that I didn't want that office job or I didn't like how I had to do this. So now you have this, and that's how you responded to it. So everything in our lives today that we're standing on, that we have, that we own, that we have possession of, all the relationships, where we are at church, they're made of those, of those two things. Wow. And so in order to get what he has for you, because we get hurt and we're like, why did this happen to me? Why, why did I go through this? But in order for us, in order for God to, re to release what he has for us and to give us everything that he wants to give us, and, and it's so good, it, it's, I can't even explain it. It can't even be in the words. But in order to get to that, um, he has to know that we're going to trust him no matter what, no matter what we've gone through, no matter what we're about to go through, he really needs you to confess that, really believe that. And he needs you to trust that he can do better with your pain and he can do better with what you've gone through than you can on your own. Yeah. Because he turns beauty into ashes. And he splits the seas. That's the type of God that he is. Come on. So he needs you to believe that for yourself. Yeah. So you can get into the, all that he has for you and the blessings and, and all the sweet land of milk and honey and all that stuff. Um, but so instead of dodging things now in our lives, and I sent this home with Do I played dodgeball with the kids on Thursday because we like to have a message and we like to have a little scripture with it. But instead of dodging these things that that we these offenses, we such a short of, we're on such a short fuse and push so much um, hurt onto ourselves that now we just start catching these things and we start. Um, just really letting them get to us. And so I really want to drive this home with um, a little thing. So number one is when we catch these things, no, these things in life, we catch them, these, uh, they, my, my uncle, he, he cuts me out, or my football, my football coach, he, he didn't believe in me, and he didn't play me in the second quarter, he didn't play me when we were down, and he didn't play me when we were out. It sounds silly because, I mean, some of us, we've been out of school for a while. We, we haven't really played any, any sports or anything like that. It's been a while, but that's what made you stop trying. And third grade and eighth grade, coach didn't put me in fourth quarter. 
why do I even want to show up to practice? Or why do I even, they didn't, they didn't give me that raise, so now why would I even want to give my best? If they're going to give it to her or they're going to give it to him, why would I keep putting my best into something when, mm. when they don't even deserve me? Oh, right. mm. wow. But it's okay because we're just holding a, a couple things, a couple hurts, a couple, we feel like this is okay to hold on to and, and I'm not going to say anything about it, I'm just going to kind of carry it around with me everywhere, but I can still move, I can still do these things, but I, could I catch what God's trying to give me right now? Yeah. Are my hands full? Yeah. Come on, so that's good. Now we're going to try to and function and do everyday things that we're, we were doing before with Scarred and we're doing these things that um, we need to do and, and we're just trying to function while still holding the things that are hurting us Wow. and not saying it about it. Friends that backstab me, girlfriend that cheated on me, we bring them into new relationships and we bring them into new places and um, we're just holding on to them. And but but it doesn't stop here, so God life keeps coming and, and the devil keeps messing with us and all these things keep happening to us and my my daughter cuts me out and my he can come in. Life doesn't come short, he comes quick. And it just keeps on happening and I get fired and my car breaks down and we keep we keep catching these things. And so now I'm just gonna keep trying to function everyday stuff and I got an arm full of hurts and a and a heart full of, of pain. Wow. And so really I I could let go. Mm. I could just be free, but it's too close to home. It, they don't, they don't know what I went through that day. They picked the right day to, to say that thing, or they don't know how tough of a day I had at work, and now you come home, and, and you're going to give me attitude, or you're going to wow. say these things, or say I, I put on a little weight or something. I don't know why that gets to people like it does, but it does. <laughs> and they chose the right day to say it. But we're on such a short fuse. But, and now we're getting good at it. Come on, son. And now we'd rather, we'd rather chase an offense. We'd rather, it's getting comfortable. And so I don't even really want to catch them, but they just keep coming to me, and I mean, why not? You know, some of us, our first instinct when someone cuts us off in, in, the, in traffic or says something and, and looks at us crazy in the store, our first instinct is to just cuss them out. Because yeah. Because that's the way we've been. True. It worked when we were in high school, it worked when we were 12 years old. So why not do it now? And he's saying you need to release those habits, you need to release yeah. those hurts, and release the things. Because why be the first version of yourself? Why be the you that you were in high school? Why Come be the you that you were when you were younger and doing all these crazy things that Amen. you know God's not God's not trying to do for you in this in this next season. <laughs> and so but it's become it's become comfortable. Wow. And it's become what we know. We've done it our whole lives. And now we're getting good at it. We're getting good at cussing people out. We're getting good at fighting. <laughs> we're getting good at all these things. We're getting good at calling people names and, and now we're getting creative with it and all this stuff. <laughs> Good word. Come on, son. Yeah. And, and another one comes and my arms are so full I can't even really catch anymore. But they just keep coming and, and I know there's more in there because they don't stop. You know? <laughs> oh, you're lucky. <laughs> I don't have time for it today. You're lucky. Yeah. And so yeah. what happens is we're just carrying all these things and all these burdens and all these things in our lives. And some of them are big. Some of them are, our family called us names. Our family didn't believe in me. Or my, my sister knew what was going on. She didn't save me. She knew I was being abused by my dad. Or she knew I was, I was mm. going through all these things at home. Wow. And, and they're, they're close to our heart. And they hurt. Yeah. They don't deserve my grace. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Mm. But what happens when you're carrying things that, that you were never meant to carry? Amen. Yeah. And God's telling you to release, but, but you're like this and it's comfortable. Mm. This is how you've been for a while now. And so when I'm like this, it's harder to do stuff that should be easy. Amen. Mm. I should be able to just use my fingers or use anything, but now I gotta find different ways and rearrange, work with my dysfunction. Yeah. Wow. When really I should be able to have no problem scrolling up and down this iPad right here. Right. Yeah. Come on. But I'm holding on to things. And, and there's these big stuff, these big hurts, 
My uncle, he stole money from me. Why? I'd rather, I'd rather not go to that family function. I'd rather not, I'd rather miss out on the last chance I could probably see my grandma. I'd rather miss out on, on the tacos and the birria and all that stuff. I'd rather miss out on that because I can't be in the same room with that cousin. Oh. Wow. I can't be in the same room with my mom. My son, I, I spent years sacrificing doing all this stuff just so that he'd live a good life and this is how he treats me? Mm. Those are things that, that go on that, that keep us holding. But now these, these little things, that, little things that they said the right thing at job or you posted something about me on Facebook and these little things, these little things that we're just catching as they come. And the little stuff, we'd rather, we'd rather go out, chase them and, and, and Try and do all this stuff. We'd rather go out and grab them. We'd rather, we'd rather stoop down, stoop down to their level. Come on. Stoop down to the little. Come place. on, son. I got some. I got some words for you today. I'd rather cuss you out in, in Walmart. No, I'm not in Walmart. I'm in West. In the, in the air at Walmart. I'd rather stoop down to that le level. I'd rather catch that offense. It's worth it to me. Come on, son. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I was doing. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I'm capable of. Facts. Do you? Well, Do you know who you are? Oh, come on. Because if you're going to church and doing all these things, is do you do you really know? Because this is what they see. This is how you present yourself to the public. Amen. Amen. Wow. And so my arms are so full, and I'm going out, catching old stuff. Old stuff comes out. I'm going to go that friend that I saw in high school. I see him in, in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was praying for a Sprouts or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they took out bonds. Like, oh, my God. Oh, man. So we're doing all these things, and, and now God's ready. We're going to church. The kids are coming. My kids are coming to youth group. Amen. I just, I'm, I, I look back in my past and remember when I went to youth group. And remember what they used to say about me. I just, I hope that doesn't happen to my kid. <laughs> and so now, God's trying to give us stuff and he's trying to catch it. And my hands are so full, I, I can't even catch it. I can't even catch the good things in my life. I'm so hurt that when, when God sends people into my life, when God sends people that are yeah. going to build me up, yeah. gonna, they don't believe me. That If they really believed in me, if they really were going to let me be a part of the church, if they were really going to, they would have texted me They would have texted me today. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what it is about today, but if, if they really did believe me, I think they would have texted me today. Amen. And these are things that we tell ourselves yeah. when we're so hurt, and we're so in our feelings, and we're so, so damaged that these little things we just make up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what it is. So, we snap at friends that try and help. We snap at friends that tell us the truth. Come on. That cuts work. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And so now my arms are so full, he tried to give, he tried to give me one thing and I couldn't even catch it. So at this point, he would be an irresponsible father to try and give me another thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I'm not going to take care of it, if I'm not going to be able to grab it and uh, I'd rather focus on this other stuff and at the same time and I can, I'm not even really paying attention to what he's giving me. Wow. And so I don't even have room to take care of it. Some of you need to make a declaration today. It's been too long. Come on, son. I've been holding on to these things for too long. So there's these friends and, and stuff that I'm just reminded of. Friends that come into our lives and they see us trying to hold on to these things and they see us trying to pick stuff and I don't really have much room space for it anymore, but there's friends that come into our life, oh, I dropped one. Oh, and they remind us of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, friends, wow. Friends that come up. <laughs> wow. They help us out. Wow. And they're telling us things that we want to hear. They're giving us the things that we want to smoke. Come they're on. They're buying us the alcohol that we don't need. Wow. And this is the... That he gets it. That he gets it, boyfriend. 
They keep rolling away and what? That one's still moving. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I wouldn't know it unless I was focused on it. But that one, wow. for some reason, it kept, it kept rolling. Wow. And yeah. I'm focusing on it. Things that, things that we let go, sometimes we're still focused on them after they hit the floor. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Sometimes, <laughs> that's the truth. you really did go to that restaurant with them, didn't you? Mm. No. You really did have that family reunion and I wasn't invited. <laughs> you really did, all my coworkers, they went out for bowling or they went out for this. Yeah. And they posted it all over Facebook. But I, I don't know what it is about, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm always losing clothes. Like, I don't know what it is, I don't know how, but sometimes I'll be like, I'll tell myself a little bit, I'll look at like old pictures and old stuff from me like a couple years ago or whatever. And, like, oh, that was a fly fit, I should, I should wear that again. <laughs> and then so I go in my closet and it's not there. And I'm like, I, I wonder what happened to that shirt. I wonder how it, how it would fit me now. And I, and I wouldn't have even really remembered, I wouldn't have really even been reminded unless I went and searched for it. And so now I'm spending time looking for the shirt, looking for it, and, and maybe now because I spent so much time looking for it, I'm late to where I was supposed to be at. And if you know me, I'm late to everything. <laughs> so I'm telling on myself a little bit, but it's our focus. What are we focused on? Are we focused on the things of last year that they're still rolling, they're still moving, and we're mad about it? We're mad that they're still going. We're mad that we're... It's time to release that. It's time to release that anger. It's time to release that pain. Because if, if, I, didn't, if I didn't look, or if I didn't search my camera roll, or if I didn't do this or do that, I wouldn't have probably noticed that it was gone. Like, I went a year without wearing it. But because I saw the picture, or I saw the photo, or the video, time hop, or Snapchat, Shows us things we were doing a year ago. We just keep focusing on them. And Proverbs 4, 25 to 27, it says, <laughs> Look straight ahead and fix your eyes for what lies before you. Mark, our, mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from evil. Amen. So right there, there's some scripture for you. Stop focusing on things that you let go last year. Come Stop on. focusing on things that you let go today, tomorrow. The things that you let, decide and declare to let go today, don't think about them tomorrow. Yeah. Come on. Don't think about them next week. Don't think about them in a month. Yeah. Let them go. Release them. Yeah. Because when we release, after a while, we just start to repeat. Yeah. Wow. Instead of releasing, we keep letting them repeat, and we keep letting them come back in our lives, and, oh, I, I miss you, how you been, or... or or whatever, and it's just repeating. Yeah. So some of us, we tried to release. We tried to let them go. It blew up and, and, and it didn't work out, but a month later they, they call you back. Stuff like that, it, it keeps us sidetracked. Everybody say right now, I'm gonna fix my focus. I'm gonna fix my focus. <laughs> It's so hard to go on with life. Sometimes I have to do it blind, and I, I, I don't even really know what I'm doing. I don't even know where I'm supposed to be. Because I have these things in my way. Ephesians 4.31-32, to it says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. Amen. But God... It's just the truth. Like, I'm not talking about them. I'm just saying who they are. And God's saying the same thing. As well as all types of evil behavior. And 32, it says, Instead, be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Hold on, God. You don't know what they did, you don't know what happened. I can't forgive them. If you really knew what happened, God, you wouldn't be saying that. Watch your mouth. 
<laughs> just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So just like like God forgave you for what you did, like the reason that you're here today, just like he made that happen, he's saying forgive them. Yeah. And so when we do this, when we finally get to live by this, this scripture, we decide, yeah, you know what? This is what, what Jake said to me. Yeah, I really do need to release. I really do need to let these things go. And so we do it. And now it's a different time. Now it's our winning season. Okay? Come on. I'm not focused on catching the bad things. I'm not even I'm not even focused on catching the good things. I'm focused on catching the God thing. Come yeah. on. Yeah. And now, and now I'm focused, right? I have this big thing. Now if you try to see you trying to talk about you can see it. Right? Yeah. I haven't talked about a time ago. Have you talked about me on social media because I logged off a while ago? Yeah. I'm not that person anymore. Say things to me. And it's not gonna get here. It's not gonna get to where I was before because I'm done with that. Yeah. Yeah. God's saying we need to forget the past. Hallelujah. He's saying we need to release. Come on. And hold on to what what He has for us. Yeah. When he's been He had it behind His back a long for a long time. He's had it ready for you for a long time. Yeah. He just needed you to release what was in there. Come on. Yeah. Just like he told the children in Israel, he was telling them, I split the wrists, I split the seas, I was there with you through Egypt. Isaiah 43, he said, but forget all that. And you're like, forget the good things? What do you mean? You were there with us, you split the sea for us, why would I want to forgive that? God, you're good. He says, forget all that, for it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do for you. Come on. <laughs> Next year. Jake's on year fire. After, and the church after that. Come on, Sam. Jake's on fire. Yeah. Come on. from your winning season because you've been holding on to the past, marinating it, bringing it back up, accusing yourself, accusing others. Right now, just focus on those things for a quick second because we're going to release those by the Spirit of God. <coughs> Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. No, really take a few seconds. Really take a few seconds. And say, God, thank you for revealing that to me today. I only want what you have. I only want that God things in my life. Help me to release the things that will keep me from it. Help me to stay focused. Help me to continue to do life with those that allow me to stay focused. Some 
got more than one thing. Some of you got three or four things. Some of you need to let some things go that happen at your job. Some of you, think, some of you need to let things uh, let go of things that happened this week. And then there's some of you that have been holding on to some things for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. You can't change that you didn't have a father that raised you. You can't change the mother that took out all her frustration on you because daddy was You can't change that, but you can release it. Yeah, you can release it. You can't change the failed marriage. You can't change the infidelities that happen, but you can release it. Wow. Father God, every hand that's lifted right now, Father God, I just thank you that an, uh, an anointing of releasing is taking place all over this room. Release a spirit of releasing right now, Father God. Release! Let it go. 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 Some of you are ashamed of the things that happened in the past. Release! Let it go. 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 The Spirit of God, let it go. You've you, you carried the shame and guilt for too long. Let it go! Thank you, Father God, that you're feeling hearts right now. And God just wanted me to say, some of you, we let go of some things and, and we've forgiven. And we, there's people that we decided to forgive and we decided to, to move on and, and press forward. He said, he said that when you decide to do that, stop, stop holding them to what they did. Stop holding them to... Because they can't really move forward if you keep on holding them to these things that that they did. It's, it's not dumb anymore. It's time for, for you to let that go. It's time for you to stop putting a cage around them. Because they can't grow if you keep holding them to the things that they did. And they can't really truly change if you keep throwing that in their face and throwing it and reminding them of what they did. It's time to really release it and, and just start fresh. That's what they're releasing. Wow. Good word. Good word. <laughs> Good word. Thank you, Father God. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Now that the releasing is taking place, now that now that our hearts are ready and, and surgery's been, been done in the hearts, Father God, now I pray for your peace, Father God. Lord, your word declares that you are the Prince of Peace, so peace be now. Peace be in the marriage. Peace be in the home. Peace be in the children. Peace, peace, peace. Let your love abound, Father. Let your grace abound. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, shout like you're crazy this morning. Amen. I need to be shout like you're crazy because I really know all of you. So, <laughs> Amen. That concludes our, the message. I don't know really what's happening. The table's <laughs>